One, two, three. I'll just make. Oh, like this a, is perfect. I'll just make a square like this. And then set the other way. Door sheet. And this is what. <laughs> Okay, do you need do you, music? Sometimes I wonder if it's you, you kind of know how that stuff comes across. Mom, it's track seven. That's, a, that's an ancient Aryan good luck symbol. Do you care about people's feelings? Of course I do. I think I'm a pretty uh, empathetic person. Because, I mean, irrespective of what the political reality is, as you see it, as other people see it, there would just be, there's just a lot of people who... Oh, you mean all the Jews that might it, be just like really it. upset at seeing a swastika so that they might, you know, be offended? Why does that make you want to I'm cause not more offense? See, I'm not doing it to go cause pain to somebody just because I find it entertaining to put a swastika on the floor. You told me to act normal. You told me to do stuff that I would normally have done. You know, when my kids and I go to the beach, sometimes we draw swastikas in the sand and you guys are nowhere around. Gee, I wonder why we do that. Maybe because we just want to, because we think it's a neat looking symbol. You just can't comprehend it. But you know what's funny? Is I can comprehend how you feel. I can understand. You don't seem to understand how I, f my way of thinking, but I do somewhat understand your way of thinking because I understand because I used to be somewhat of a brainwashed lemming like yourself. No offense. No, <laughs> For several weeks I'd been living among a community of true believers trying to find the humanity in people whose worldview is probably the most abhorrent and discredited conceivable. But so far I wasn't having a very easy time of it. My journey began three weeks earlier in Fallbrook, California, a small town half an hour outside San Diego. I was on my way to meet one of America's most notorious racists, a grand dragon of the KKK in the 70s, a congressional candidate in the 80s, and now the leader of White Aryan Resistance, a self-styled revolutionary group. His name, Tom Metzger. How are you doing? Pretty good. You must be Tom. And what branch of the government are you from? I'm from, Tom. I'm from the BBC, oh, the, the broadcasting oh, arm of the government. Oh, the, the, the heavy duty boys. Huh? Yeah. Come on in. Are you uh, Tom's better half? Yes, I am actually. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's my better half. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't admit that too often. I got to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> okay. Come on, coffee. Do you, I mean, I'm sort of just sort of starting out, so I don't really, I'm not familiar with all, sure. all the terminology and, and, you know, the specifics of your politics and your worldview, but, I mean, are you, are you a Nazi? I think I'm more serious than most of the Nazis I've met. I, I'm a, a pan-Aryanist, I believe, in white people all over the world sticking together. Here's the latest paper. So this is the main work you do, really, is, um... Newspaper, internet. War stands for White Aryan Resistance. What do we got there? Well, this is a typical uh, white whore and a black guy. What is the problem with a, a white woman going out with a black man? Most black men are ugly, number one. You think you're better looking than uh, Denzel Washington? Yeah. Do you really? Oh, yeah. What if that was put to a vote and you were outvoted? And if I had the money and the power and the, and the uh, deal making movies, I'd get ten times more women than him. Do you really believe that? That seems delusional. Well, I believe it. I don't know whether it's delusional or not. Well, Denzel I... Washington's in there because they have to do that. They have to. No, but I'm just talking about like just on looks. I mean, you gotta. I mean, 
Denzel, you, you think he's? You can't really Well, he's not bad looking. He's not an, uh, as ugly. Yeah, but uh, I mean, he's I not as ugly a nigger as most. Like uh, Kobe Bryant. Why did you use that word? I use it all the time. I never used to use it. Would you not use it around me? Not use it. In my home, I'll use it. Uh, if you don't want me to say it in a restaurant or out someplace, I won't. But in my home, I'll say whatever I want. And it's, then it's up to you. That's your right. Right. As a favor to me, though. No. If I decide I want to say nigger, I'll say it. If I don't want to say it, I won't say it. That really upsets you, doesn't it? Mm. It doesn't really upset me. Well, good. Then we'll go on and show some more cartoons. Like, uh, it makes me think slightly less of you. Well, that's okay. I'm, I'm not here to adopt you. Well, I got a lot of CDs. I don't know why I like every one of them, but some of them I probably haven't even played yet. There's a lot of skinhead music there. Bennett. That one? Yeah, that's... Hey, leave it alone. Yeah. What is the point of having a, a lynching of a black man on a, on a CD? I think it's uh, conveying the message that if a black person is out of line, badly, that it's fine, they should be lynched. But we'll probably let the sheriff and the, do, the police do it. Don't you think that's quite don't you think that's I want quite them shocking? All out of here. I don't want to hang one at a time. Are you kidding? That's too slow. We want them all out. Is do what you really? Of course. We don't need them. They're a pain. They drag us down. But, they, but on the other hand, they can have their own nation, their own police, their own military. We don't want any part of them. They should be happy. You know, the blacks are always saying how... Don't you think that's, don't you think that's quite shocking, Mary, to, to have a, a picture of a black guy being lynched on a, on a CD? It's part of history. I don't think it's terribly shocking, no. I think somebody knocked at the door. Yeah, who is that? That would be your. Would that be Lynn? I don't know. She said four. Oh, it is four. <laughs> Lori. Lori, my long lost little angel. <laughs> who is Lori? Mary. She's the youngest daughter. Okay. Hello, guys. Hello. How do you do? This is. Uh, I'm Louis. Hello, nice, nice to meet Louis. you. Nice to meet you. What do you do, Lori? I work at Starbucks. Do you? Can I go to school? Do you consider yourself a racist? No, but I think in everyone's own way that everyone is racist because my whole life, you know, all throughout school, kids, white, black, whatever, would hate me because of my last name. Really? Yeah. You so, pointed at me. No, well, I mean. Well, why would they do that? Not because of you, but because, you I know, never hung any or, of those ooh, kids. you know. Is your dad Tom? Because you know, he, because they had because they'd heard of Tom Metzger as, as a leading racist and you know even now today just, at work you know people talk about me. And, could you go out with a, a a Jewish guy? I mean I can. I'm of age. I can you know do my own choices. How would you feel about that? Would you worry about what your dad would think? Maybe a little, but not much. I'm not gonna. Ask for his, his approval. <laughs> that wouldn't make me too happy. <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> I know you're not. What would you do then? Well, I would not have a Jew with my daughter in this house. Period. It, 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 it seems it bespeaks kind of a hatred, really. No, I hate the people who cause me to hate. They kill my friends. They imprison them for life. They give them many more years than they do the common black Negro. They rape and torture our That's people. That's such bull. That is, so, that is such bull. Don't you read the crime statistics in your own country, for Christ's sake? Don't you read what blacks do in England? I do. Excuse me. If I wanted to stay the night at your place, 
Would that be, you know, would that be feasible? I don't think I'd like that. Really? I don't feel comfortable with any stranger staying in my home. It's nothing personal. We can be pals and go out to lunch and go out and have a beer or something like that. I'll even take you out down there and I'll sing karaoke to you. We can be buddies to that point, but uh, it would be sort of weird of me to have a buddy buddy just to be a buddy, non-political buddy. Would it? Yeah. Because, um, I mean, I don't want to do it in a tokenistic way. Well, at this time, it would be a very tokenistic really? way. Really? Yeah. It had been a long and in some ways depressing day. I'd found Tom's attitudes exhausting, and I was still more confused when the karaoke bar he took me to turned out to be largely non-white. I could only assume that for Tom, karaoke sometimes took precedence over racism. On a day I was born, I us all gathered around. The next day, and Tom was taking me to meet his recently hired manager, John Malpezzi. John was supposedly a show business veteran with a long list of Hollywood contacts. Exactly why a Nazi needed such a manager was still unclear to me. How do you do? Fine. You must be John. And you must be Louis. Yes, I am. Looking forward to meeting you, Louis. Yeah, me too. Time. Thank you. One of the most important things that I do is arranging for his bookings that are outside of the country and that are specialized bookings that go on with the advance of the appearances, the appearance that he has. We've got uh, a lot of things planned for this year. We've got several that are up and coming that you've probably heard of and are invited to. And uh, we're looking forward to a very, very busy year of raising his profile internationally even more than it is. So. Why? Why not? That's his job. <laughs> That's my <laughs> That's job. Why. <laughs> <laughs> Has John seen the paper uh, that you put out? Of course. Yes, he's, yeah, he's of course. seen it. I don't know how much he's read it, but he's seen it. Here again, I don't grab anybody by the lapels, including my yeah. manager. All right. I don't like that. And, and remember, and remember, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an adult guy that's John, been around a long time. Would it, would it, would it be appropriate to um, show you the, the pet, you know, to look at one now, of the... Now, if you're going to, if you're going to read, <laughs> if you're going to read uh, striking, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> on fire type of stuff and ask, do you agree with this? <laughs> I don't want to go there because that's not, that's not what this is all about. Other, other people I've, I've known in the past, if you would pull that on them and you were in their airplane, they'd throw you out of the airplane, over, yeah. over the jungle, you know. If I did what? What's wrong with John? If I did what, John? Well, let's continue, okay? <laughs> I love this guy. He is good. Hey, Tom, He's I hope good. you sang Louie Louie at the karaoke for Louis, just for Louie Louie, yeah. <laughs> It was all a little bit weird, and I still didn't understand how exactly John and Tom fit together. But I'd heard rumors that John had had a colorful career prior to working with Tom, and I wondered whether that might help explain their relationship. Back at John's house, I seized my moment to ask. And was there some, um, did you, you had some sort of a run-in with the authorities and, and, uh... Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, what is this? What? <laughs> well, spent you time in... Didn't you tell him? You told him, didn't you? And didn't you spend time in prison, John? <laughs> sure, why not? It's all public. He's on the yeah. run. What, what was it? What happened? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> right, I'm on the run here, openly and notoriously. I'd rather not uh, discuss that, you know. Come on. You can't talk about that? Well, let me put it to you this way. I represented a lot of... Come on out with it. I'll show you the view, boys. The view out here. I represented a lot of... Of large clients, as I told you, large clients like Pablo Escobar and guys like that, you know, 
You were some kind of cocaine, big king pink cocaine dealer? I, oh, me, little old me. Oh, gee. Seriously? See, everybody needs an attorney, even guys like Pablo Escobar. This is uh, this is the view here. And how long did how long did you get? What was your sentence? Well, I was looking at uh, 85 years, and uh, which would at that age would have meant a life sentence, and uh, uh, we beat it actually, and wound up doing three and a half. And I'm not ashamed to say that. What was the conviction? Um, cocaine trafficking and related charges. Today, today, folks, uh, I'm not into that business. Uh, you know, have to move on. You know, so um, I do other things. How long have the two of you been in business together? Well, we've known each other some time, but several years. But we have not really been in business together very long. I'd say about a year or yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Couple of months, you said. Well, you see, it crosses over from friendship to uh, business, and it gets a little blurry. Yeah, I know you like to stay with people. You're a nice guy. Tom's house is his house. My mother is, as you know, she's you know back from the hospital in the next day or two. Uh, if you're still around, you know, it'd be my pleasure to host you, Louis. I, I like really? you. No, I like you as a person, and I. I don't think you're as sneaky as you think you are. I, th I think you're a real nice guy, you know? <laughs> so, uh, other questions? Would that be okay with you, Tom? I don't care. John is his own man. He, I, all yeah, of I'm my not... people are that way. They do what they decide to do. Because and... we were hoping to stay over with you, maybe, but... No. There's no... There, no. It's not going to happen. No. Thinking about it? No. No. Wouldn't even consider it. And remember, Louis, every guy that I ever got who John was and how much of what he said I could believe was still all rather vague to me, and possibly to him too. But it seemed clear that Tom trusted him, and I was intrigued by their relationship. <laughs> Isn't he? Some days later, and Tom was booked to speak at a skinhead rally. For him to make a public appearance was quite a rarity. Usually he confined himself to his internet chat room and his phone lines. I was curious to meet a few of his supporters face to face, so a few days before the big event, I decided to visit one of the organizers, a skinhead named Skip. How are you doing? Good, good morning. Should we come in? Come aboard. Skip, I'm Louis. I know. I yeah. Remember. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Got a little cut? Yeah. What happened? A little cut at work. Went right through the lip. Ouch. Yeah, good stuff. Introduce us to your family, will you? Hi, folks. How are you? How are you doing? Sydney. Sydney. Come on, and we'll meet the family. Where's Sydney? Come on. This is my youngest, ah, Sydney. Sydney. This is number two, Rhiannon. Hi, Rhiannon. And this is number one, Kearney. Hi, Kearney. My lovely wife, Heather. Hi. Hi, Heather. My baby, my baby brother, Lenny. 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 How are you? Lenny. Good. Lenny. Yeah. Lenny. <laughs> Lenny. Yeah. Baby brother. Yeah. Baby brother. Baby brother. Right. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Well, welcome to yeah. paradise. Yeah. <laughs> so this is where you live. This is where I live. This is where it where all happens. Where we do it all. Yeah. It's where the magic happens. <laughs> Watch these cats. Don't come running out. We're going in. Just a regular house. I mean, it don't look nothing like the garage just because I'm a, you know, I mean, I, I am responsible too at the same time. Yeah. But this is our kitchen. This is where what we do, eat. It's, what do you, you are a, I mean, would you call yourself a skinhead? You bet. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I've been skinhead since 83. Um, and you know, we've been making a documentary about, about Tom Metzger. And um, do you regard him, how do you view him? As a good man, a good patriot. He's uh, done a lot for um, a long time. Done a lot of good for the young guys. Mm. I've been following him since like '83. You know, every move, all the skinheads. He's done a lot of. He's done a lot of good. Yeah, he's a good patriot. Would you consider yourself white racist too? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Nancy. 
conversation. You don't look like you're not. We're not big conversationalists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's gonna take a little bit of a. But she seemed on the fence in, with that. You yeah. seemed a little on the fence there. On the fence? Yeah. Uh, like you're not. No, hmm. I think you're on the fence too. Yeah. Yeah. So watching. So oh. I'm on the me. I'm on the me. I mean, I'm the media. I don't. I, I don't come. Uh, I'm not sort of like disguising. I would say that's like an insult to say someone's on the fence. Really? I mean, yeah. Why? In our, in our group, probably. Because get off the fence, you know what I mean? Yeah. Pick a side. Be there, you know what I mean? That's what it's all about. I didn't mean to insult you, Nancy. I apologize. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> so if I told you I was Jewish, would that create a problem yeah, between yeah. us? Well, because you've got the camera right now, I'd allow you to stay. If not, I'd probably kick your ass and put you in the street somewhere. For real? Pretty much because a Jew wouldn't be here on my property. Are you Jewish? Do you mind if I don't <laughs> answer that? <laughs> you with the camera, are you? <laughs> Classic. Is it my turn? That was so funny. That's not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying yes or no. So you're on the fence. <laughs> right? You're on the, fe you're on the yeah. fence. You I, I tell you why, I don't want, I, I, I'm not a racist. And, and I don't, I think it's, I actually think it's wrong to be a racist. And so I feel as though by, um, you know, by saying whether I'm Jewish or not, I'm kind of, in a way, acknowledging a, the premise that it really matters when I think it shouldn't and it doesn't. Now, we're leaving these ones alone. These are for the girls. And I don't think we need this much water. It's a little bit too much. I wasn't sure how long I'd be welcome at the house, but I thought I'd enjoy it while it lasted. As the afternoon passed, I could almost have convinced myself that I was feeling relaxed. But something was still bothering Skip. How about that? Louis is a Jew. We already know it. I already know it. You're a Jew. That's why you got so much animosity. Well, we, okay. That's why you we have can't so much say you don't look like a Jew. Wait. You're a Jew. You're part Jewish. And don't, don't not say I'm not because you think somebody's going to beat you up because it's not like that with us. Why do you care? How, why will it make any difference to you whether I am because or Because I like to know who's been in my house. We don't care you, you, as in the you fact, are, like, we you, don't care you do if you're a Jew, kind of a Christian, a fucking you are kind of or whatever, you nicker. You do look kind of Jewish. You got an accent like these lads. He's not Jewish, I'll tell you that look right now. Look at his now. face, you know he's not Jewish. He's not Jewish. But you, frankly, we look at your face, but, but we would like to know. We want to know if you're a fucking Jew, and if we let you into our house to film our fucking dare, everyday ritual, even are if you, you are. a fucking Jew? I don't feel as though, I mean, maybe you disagree, I don't feel as though I've kind of compelled you to say anything. No, or I feel no. as though I've been respectful and, and I appreciate that you've I'm let not us even into your debating house. the fact that you've been respectful to my house and to my people. So, and I don't think I would, I honestly don't think I would interrogate you to the point where if, if you said, I don't want to talk about that, I would say, okay, that's fine, we'll talk well, about well, something well, else. Uh, uh, so I'd like you to, re to respect me in the same way. Can we turn the camera off for a second? Pull, 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 pull the plug? Pull the plug for a second? What for? Good, good. Well, nothing crazy. <laughs> no, 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 it's just, fine. Uh, just for free talk to not feel like we're being filmed about. So I really, I would really rather not say. I would really rather you tell me. I've exposed myself. I've exposed my family. I've exposed my brothers, my sisters, and my children. Expose yourself now. I'll ask, I'll answer any. I'll ask. Let's leave it at that, can we, please, Skip? Yeah, we will. In just a second. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. I thought it was time to leave. It was the day of the skinhead rally, and I was back at Tom's. Nice to see you today. Good. You look nice. Thank you. So do Tom you. Is I think getting the final objects together, finish loading up the car. The final what together? Objects. Objects. Stuff to take. Are you in there, Tom? Yo, 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 are you ready to go to the hate nanny? Jeez. Huh? Is that what they call it? Uh, the hate nanny. With a certain amount of trepidation, I was returning to Skip's place for an all day white power music event at which Tom would be the keynote speaker. I still hadn't seen Tom among fellow racists, and I was curious how he would be received. Is this it in here? Second house on the left, yeah, this is it. Second house. Left. 
Hi. How you doing? Tom Metzger for Tommy Romero. You got a walkie-talkie? No, actually, you did just had it. Walked off. Where do I park? You can uh, just pull down the bag. Okay. Hi, Tom, brother. Tom had told me he speaks at one or two rallies a year, and that by skinhead standards, this was a major event. Hi. How you doing? Like Sir, to meet you. Oh, yeah, this one. Is this a swag chain? You want to take a picture of me? With me? Uh, yeah. Sure. 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 Are we going to picture sure. take? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Who is this? Who is this? I was hoping that Tom would be my guide through what promised to be, for me, a pretty strange experience. But with the public to meet, Tom no longer seemed to view me as a top priority. As a member of the supposedly Jewish-run media, I suspected he found my presence in his entourage a little embarrassing. A good turnout, huh? Yeah. Keith, it's good. Any of you guys want to talk about Tom at all for the documentary? You want, any of you guys want to talk about Tom for the documentary at all? I gotta go back here. I don't talk to you. That's good. I felt like the school kid no one wanted to be friends with. And then the next act came on stage. This was the first time I saw the singing duo, Lamb and Lynx. because this is going to be the start of the second American Civil War. Yeah. Right here in California. White Revolution! White Revolution! White Revolution! Thank you, thank you. Popsicles. You like popsicles? I do. How are you doing? Uh, I'm a little, uh, a little tired, but I'm okay. Kind of morning after feeling. Yeah, a little bit, but I got in early. How late did you stay? Uh, there? Like a half hour. Half hour. Yeah. 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 I can't take it anymore. Did she? No, she didn't. <laughs> she had things to do, you know. Mm. I usually don't drag her around all over the country too much. Did she enjoy it? Yeah. Should we go outside for a bit? It's very nice out. I have to put my shoes on. Do you? Mm -hmm. What is it you like about the skinheads? I like about them because they're no, not hypocritical. They're out in the open. They are what they are. They love what they are, and they don't give a damn what anybody thinks. But they are strong racist, and we need them. Don't they turn off a lot of the public? A lot of the public do doesn't mean a damn to us. You realize we're not trying to recruit the general public. What would we do with them if we had them? They sit on their ass, watch a television uh, 20 hours a day. They're feeding their mouth full of crap. Uh, all they want to do is go out and buy, buy, buy. What good would they be to us? We're talking about revolutionary activity. We want the leaders out there in the public, but not the public. We're trying to reach those people out there that really know what's cooking.
I sensed Tom and I needed a break from each other, and so I decided to drive up to Central California to meet the two little girls I'd seen at the rally, Lamb and Lynx, and their manager and mother, April. April. Yes. Nice to see you again. Do you remember we met at the rally? Yes, yes, I did. Shall we come in? Yeah. Which one's yeah. Lynx and which one's Lamb? I'm Lamb. Hi, Lamb. The one back there is Lynx. Hello. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm Louie. So very pleased to meet you. Remember him nice from to Saturday? Meet you. Maybe we can do a, uh, a, a sort of a recital later. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah, I think that would be good. I want to tell you about South Africa and the so-called fight for freedom. But they march praise black resistance and the communists who lead them. Not too far away in Angola and near home Zimbabwe. The Marxist black dictators are looking south in fear to see. Strike force! White survival, strike force, yeah. Strike force, gonna kill a rival. Strike force into the devil's lair. Do they, um, they, don't, they don't seem old enough to really know what that's about. Well, I've explained to it some. What's the ANC? It's um, African National so, na African National Con Congress. Congress. Okay. And what, what happened in South Sorry. Africa? The, the blacks are killing whites. Yeah. Out of the homes. Out of the homes. And in Zimbabwe. And then, yeah, and then Zimbabwe. Then Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Yeah. I mean, they seem a little young to get into politics and racial issues, maybe. Yeah, yeah but they've got to start sometime. How old are they? They're 11. They're 11? What is the idea behind creating this group out of them that sings? I think that Lamb and Lynx's music and their appeal, especially as they just get a little bit older, they're going to be an example and they're going to show be how being proud of your race is something that would be very appealing to young teenage girls. You know, I mean, what young man, red-blooded American boy isn't going to find two blonde twins, 16 years old, singing about white pride and pride in your race, what, who, very few are not going to find that very appealing. So what, so what, um, I'm just curious about how, what school do they go to? What school do you go to? We homeschool. We homeschool. You homeschool? So who teaches you? My mama. Mom. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, who wants what? Bologna, ham, or salami? So where is the, is there a man of the house, April? Yeah, there's my fiancé. And he uh, declined to be shown on camera because of his occupation. He's worried. He, we have the same belief system, and he's very supportive of everything. But he actually, he'd love to appear, but he worried that it would cause him to lose his job and it would... What does he do? He's an educator. Would you like tomato with, tomato with it too? Are there things that they're forbidden that other kids have? Things that you deny them? Game Boys, we don't... Yeah, I don't, I'm not much for the Nintendo People computer so game stuff. I mean, what about on racial terms though? Oh, we've got ethnic cleansing, but that's, we don't play that very often. What's that? Yeah. I said, what's that's that? A, that's a, a computer game that the National Alliance puts out called, eth it's called Ethnic Cleansing, and it's basically a shoot 'em up computer game in which you basically a skinhead goes through a ghetto and, and uh, shoots blacks and Mexicans. Do you like it? Mm hmm. It's really hard, though, because, of course, all the people that you shoot have guns, too. Like, and they're shooting back. They hide in bushes and stuff, and they <laughs> like they like perched up on 
basketball hoops and stuff and the climbing in trees and stuff. So you've got to watch out and then when you hear this gorilla sound, they make gorilla sounds, it goes ooh, 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 like that and you go whew, like that and then you shoot it. Is that a good idea, do you think, April? Mm -hmm. It seems a little... Uh... Vulgar? Okay. <laughs> After lunch, Lamb and Lynx were keen to show me their horses, stabled a short drive away. Do you ever wish, there's a school bus. Do you ever wish you went to school with the other kids? Mm, sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then I think that I will be able to go with my horse. So. Yeah. And that though we wouldn't be able to see our mom as much. And so we'll get that. What did you say, Lamb? You wouldn't be able to go with your horse, did you say? Yes. Why? Play with my horse. Well, I wouldn't in the evenings, but she's really attached to her horses. I can't. Yeah. Oh, is that the skinhead army thing? Is Who's it by? It's, it's Max Resist, but I don't think, I think it's a cover oh. by somebody else. I think somebody else, like Lands or... ...to all white nationalists all around the world. You're not a two, we will win. <laughs> I guess we'll just say that uh, you're interviewing us about the kids' music. Why is that? Um... I just don't. I just don't want somebody messing with my horses because, you know, and hurting my horses because of my politics. You know, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do out, out here. Do you have to lead a double life to some I've, extent? I've never really had to before because, you know, I've never been in the situation that I'm in now. It's really hard for me to be covert, though, because I'm just so, it's just, it's just like so much, it's like in every pore, you know? I've noticed. Can I help? Can I, can I, can I take the rag and, and do a bit? Yeah, if you want to. What do I do? I don't, you can wipe them down if you want. Is this or, just water? Yeah, it's just water on there right now. I was just cleaning their nostrils. Oh, cleaning the nostrils. <laughs> Are they talking to each other? We can give them a brush. Hey, girls, why don't you give them a brush? Would you have a problem if Lynx or Lamb brought home a friend of another race? Yeah, I probably wouldn't be real happy about it. What would you do? I would probably tell them uh, not to. I would probably tell them, you know, if that's, if that's what you're going to do, don't bring them home. See, because this is what the way I would see it. I would see it first, it's the friend. It's okay to have the, the nice black friend, and then the next thing, it's going to be the nice black boyfriend. And you'd have a problem with that? I would never speak to them again. That would be it. If they were race traders, then they wouldn't... I, that, that absolutely would be... I wouldn't want to have anything to do with them ever again, and I've told them that. I consider it because this you, is the way It's I, easy to say, but, you know, the maternal instinct's got to be one of the strongest instincts in human beings. Mm -hmm. You're saying you would, you would completely go against that, have no contact with your, with your child? I would be so disappointed. I would just be so disappointed. Come on. Come on, Becky. I couldn't quite believe the almost reckless intensity of April's racism. 
She seemed to revel in how outrageous her beliefs were. I wondered how Lynx and Lamb would grow up and how they would feel about their mother once they'd left home and were able to think for themselves. Later that day, we headed off to meet April's father. I'd heard he was also a proud racist, and I was hoping he might help me to understand how April came by her beliefs. How do you do? Hello. Louis Theroux, BBC. Nice to meet you. You must be April's father. Yeah. This is my dad, Bill <laughs> Gady. <laughs> Bill Gady. Yeah. Can we, um, I noticed you had it. Can we look at your cattle brand? It's the ranch logo. I'm not sure what the right expression is. It's, it's the cattle brand. How do you view April's beliefs as far as preserving the white race and... I think it's great. Yeah, I think you ought to preserve it. Certainly you should. You know, doesn't, doesn't it, doesn't our family it's... were Vikings in Denmark in the 12th century. Why not preserve it? It seems to me it'll, it's going to preserve itself just fine and that there's no need for any well, radical you know, action as you know, far as laws or campaigning. You're sitting under a manhole cover. You can't see anything. Why, why is that? You just can't see it because you're not here. You can't see what's going on. Right now... All the people have been so politically correct, they wouldn't say shit if they had a mouth full of it, you know. But now the people are beginning to, to see what's going on, and they're beginning, their backbone's beginning to straighten up a little bit and get a little stiffer. All the white people are. I'm a multiculturalist. Are you? Yeah. When you get married, are you going to marry a white person or a nigger? Well. Huh? What do you usually date? Do you usually date white women? So far, that's what you find attractive. Does Jewish count as white? No, no not in our books. Why not? <laughs> I think we should hope that he marries some 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 Jewess. I mean, won't that be won't that be funny? A, a Jap. Yeah, you know a Jewish a Jap American is? princess. I hope, boy, you you're going to be. A Jap, a boy, she's going to have you right. She's going to have you right there. Push it right down. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Louis. Louis. Louie, I want a new ring, Louie. Yeah, bring me, bring me my coffee, my tea, Louie. I come and flush the toilet for me, Louie. I can't put the handle down. Yeah. So is that where you get it from, do you think, April? The biggest gift that I got from my father was to not give a rip about what anybody else thought. It's what you thought. It's what you really knew in your heart was the right thing to do. It didn't matter if every single person was against you. If you know what you believe is right, then you have, and you can have the strength to just to fight against everybody and to stand strong against everyone. And I believe that I inherited that, I think, in the genes, and then I was taught that also. And I think, and I owe my dad a lot for giving me that. That was a gift. Back in Fallbrook, and I had a date with Tom. There was a plan in place to meet another of his daughters, this one named Lynn. But before that, a barbecue. Good Louis, afternoon. Louis, Louis. You feel at home? Very much so. Look at you, you're wearing a, a bowler hat. Yeah, how do you like that? You feel at home? It's good. Come on in. It's good. Is that in honor of me? Yeah, right. A little oh, bottle of something. something. Oh, you should have brought two or three, but that's all right. That's all right. I've got one more in the car if we run low. All right. So the plan is to have a barbecue, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And just keep it real simple, real easy. Yeah, that's how I like it. Hi, John, how are you doing? Fine, Mary, good to see you again, dear. Mm -hmm. Good to see you, John. Have time and you, and you, oh, the camera's on. Hey, I brought something for Louis. Back, Louis, back. Back, Louis, back. <laughs> what, is, what does it mean? 
This cross came from the movie Scream, Dracula Scream. <laughs> oh, I definitely saw that. Right, so uh, it's a prop. You haven't met uh, Laurie before, John? No. Well, no, they've, uh, they've kept me in a cage whenever she's around. I so. gotta watch him when it comes to young girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, Where I've heard that John prefers uh, Mexican women. What? Where is that cross again? <laughs> back, Louie, back. Can't we talk back, about Louie, that? back. It didn't work in the movie, so sorry. Yeah. I got those pork especially for you to check you out. The turkey. <laughs> he read the label. <laughs> I told Mary I was going to do that. Do you care if I'm Jewish? Not for this, no. What about for something else? You're doing your job. And, uh, that's the way it goes. Sometimes there's neutral territory. I wonder if you could give me a hand. I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, you said you wanted to help cook. Yeah. Well, we got to turn down the... That is a little... That's it, on too hot, isn't it? It's too hot. Should we invite the neighbors over? I think the neighbors went to TJ. They, they Who have you got on that side? Well, that's a white guy. He's married to a Mexican gal. She's an American-type Mexican. And they got a couple of kids. Do you get on okay with them? Yeah, we get along okay. Is she she's white? No, she's not white. But she's friendly. We don't have a problem. I hope you like your hot dogs well done. I think that's about well done enough, <laughs> okay. man. You man, you have screwed my hot dog up. <laughs> I think it's a Polish sausage. Let I me mean, get it's, that. Ah. It's Do you want me to put another one on? No, Careful no, that's not that's okay. That's edible. Then it was off to see Tom's daughter, Lynn, and her daughter, Valerie, who, like Lamb and Lynx, is 11 years old. I'd heard Lynn was the most racist of Tom's five daughters, so I was curious to meet her. Maybe the wrong place. I got the wrong place. Hey! Hey! Where I saw you guys walking by. I'm like, where are you going? Well, you know me. I, get, I know, I know. I forget. They all, a bunch of communist places. They all look alike. They all do. Hello. Hello, Simon. <laughs> Louis. Louis. This is Louis. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Simon too. Lynn. Louis. This is Valerie, my daughter. Nice to meet you. How do you do? Louis the star. The star, huh? Don't forget it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we won't. Come on <laughs> in. Um, Tom said you used to run the Aryan Women's League. I did. I did. Um, in fact, it was running for Thank about, you. I guess, five, six years. And um, we decided to merge with war because we were doing the same thing. War so, is Tom's, Tom's exactly, organization. Exactly, exactly. Basically, I'm curious, do you, share, do you have the same kind of racial views that Tom does? I do. Um, I don't, I'm not one of these labels yeah. type of people. Nazi, left, right, Democrat, Republican, you know, pacifist, whatever. I don't like that. No. Um, I do have a strong sense of uh, racial identity, yeah. strong sense of uh, nature, believing in nature, etc. And um, but I don't like I don't like the labels. I don't even like to hear them because they really don't mean anything. Are you like, comfortable just to? Are you comfortable Sikh hiling, for example? I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. It's not something I do often. In fact, last night I did, and that was probably the first time in a long time. What's Valerie's position? I mean, is Valerie comfortable on camera or is she going to sort of hang back? Um, I, uh, I asked her and she said in the background would be fine. Yeah. I don't have a problem not talking to her. Okay. Um, she's 11 years old. She's, she's kind of big for her age, but yeah. she's, you know, she's a really good kid. Are you, I mean, are you bringing her up as a racist? Bringing her up as a racist. I'm bringing her up very aware of her heritage, very aware of what's going on. Um, I've often told her I have opinions, I have beliefs, and just like my dad did when I was a kid, um, I told her that she needs to explore. She needs to know what's out there, and mm. she can't just take what I say. Would, she be, would you be happy for her to bring children, friends of other races back to the house? No. I wouldn't be happy, I mean, honestly. Um, 
I mean, she's going to, you know, what I believe is she's going to, you know, learn from me and my actions and my words and my thoughts when I put them into actions. So we'll just see what happens. I was nearing the end of my time with Tom, and for some days, John had been talking about the idea of going to Mexico. His exact purpose was unclear, but for me, I thought it might be a chance to see Tom in a different environment, and so I thought I'd tag along. Hey, John, how are you doing? You're gonna love it. Let's get ready to go. Where's Tom? He's waiting for us. Where? At his house. Oh, great, so let's go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me get it, let me get it going. I've got it all prepared. I've got, uh, a, now, Louie, what do you think? Is, is, am I going to be too warm today, dressed like this? I look like a tourist, which is what I want to look like, instead of like the slick guy like you that I should be looking like, you know? And why are we interested in seeing Tom in, in Mexico? You're going to love to be seeing Tom in Mexico. Why? Well, you're going to see what an international politician does. Now, these are my uh, little medicines here for myself. And he's a racist politician, so I suppose it's interesting to see him among... Uh... In a racist country. They will respect him like... A... Oh, they're racist down there. You didn't know that? <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> hey, Louis, he's afraid of getting kidnapped. No, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, every time he goes to Mexico, they try to kidnap him. So we'll be in your car? No, we'll be in your car. So what is the plan when we get there? Why don't you stuff. tell them the truth? You just want to get to that whore down there. That's what you're really saying. I wouldn't, I, refer, I, I, I wouldn't refer to a lovely lady like that as a whore. Well, if you pay money, she's a whore. Esta Montserrat. Hello? Hey, did I send this? It says, oh, <laughs> send. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dialing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Boy, that's a mouthful. Yeah, we're, we're in, in. We're, we're in. in. Watch it now. Stay in the right lane. Stay in the right lane. Right lane. Why right lane. are you getting in the middle lane? Downtown. Get over the left. See, left lane, Louis. Hurry up, brother. Still sleepy, grumpy. Boy, you got more backseat drivers than you ever had. Right turn here, Louis. If you want a new life, what's a few minutes way? Darkness on the road. I was still curious what form Tom's ambassadorial trip would take, and was surprised when John began directing me to Tijuana's tourist bars. I want a sombrero. I want a buy. I'll take you right there, right up down there, all those shops. Let's go, yeah. Well, let's have a drink first. Yeah, let's get a drink first. The, the drinks are right down there, too. Monserrat! Is that her? Does she recognize you? Montserrat! <laughs> so yo! Ah, por fin! Oh! Hello, I'm Louis. Is it Louis? Un, un guy como, um, what's his name? Uh, Geraldo uh, Rivera, the Inglaterra. Yeah. Yes, yes, me, Clarence. Hi. Tom Metzger, on a Fleville senior in the Stalin Unidos, and guess el crew. Tomasita, mi amor. Montserrat and I are going to get married one day. Vamos casar un buen día. Can we say what it's about? No. Because I don't want to... Who knows what her, her politics or her, uh, her uh, celebrity, you know, things are. She's my girl, and she's going to be showing us around. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you guys got a documentary for us? Yeah, we do. It. Where are you from? Uh, Sacramento. I used to be the head of the KKK in California. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> and now I come down. What happened? With it. You get They're... kicked out or what? No, I quit. But yeah. anyhow, yeah, we can skin well, I got now, something really wild. I'm skinhead now. You guys need me in Sacramento. That's a fucked up place.
It's all so all fucked up. <laughs> no, you got Schwarzenegger. He's gonna terminate the the, the black the, nigger, right? Yeah, he's, he's gonna, gonna terminate the. He's uh, gonna fuck. State. Hey, you think he's gonna save us? Bullshit. I don't know. You're, you sound like a racist to me. I am a racist. What the hell are you I'm talking not a about? Racist. You're not a racist. I'm not, I'm racist. No, I'm not a racist. Don't you want your grandchildren to look like you? I don't give a shit what my grandchildren. Oh look like. man, yeah. you're, you're, you're yeah, killing me. One dollar. It's one dollar, Tom. That's give him a dollar as a tip. Buy me a beer too. Good choice, Tom. The ambassadorial visit was degenerating into a pub crawl. It had all become rather chaotic. Do I need another hat? Rings. I need a, I need a bigger hat is what I need. I need no swastika? Let's see the one. Do you have any swastika rings? Swastika. Where's Tom? Where's Tom gone? Several tequilas later, we lost Tom in a souvenir shop somewhere. When he resurfaced, he seemed even more drunk. He was concerned that he could have been attacked or kidnapped and accused John of neglecting his security duties. I don't depend on anybody who runs any town. I depend on my security. And when I walk out of a place and my security is not there... Well, did Louis leave you? You because don't seem to understand, no, John. What I'm trying to tell you is there are certain towns that are run a certain way and I am totally wired in down here. I don't give a shit how you're wired in. I'm wired into only my own people. I don't trust anybody else, nobody town, nobody you know. I trust my friends. My security next time is coming with me. But I'm telling you, if I can walk my around here... My friends are concerned about my security. If I can walk around here with a fucking hat on my head, no, looking like a clown... Your whole brain's full of pussy. That's all you're thinking about. No, it's not. You think I'm not a racist? I'm just no, racist you're not a you no, you're not a racist like I am. Don't be a wolf I'm you, gonna make a bet. I'm you, gonna make. I'm gonna put my dollar down. He okay? would fuck Montserrat, and I would. Why? She's not white. I gotta go pee. The day was winding to a close, and I reflected on Tom's fears of being kidnapped. I felt this was Tom at his most unguarded, and what struck me was Tom's fantasies of his own importance. In the car on the way home, John made a last attempt to salvage something from the international trip. Tom, tell us about Mexico, okay? What did you think about it? Was I it think, fun? I think it's a very interesting place to visit. And uh, I think a lot of Aryans should go there and carve out something like a country. And that might be something that I'm thinking about. And you know what? That's exactly what we're all thinking about here. When I saw how well you could get on up there, Tom, it made me think, well, maybe, maybe you'd abandon racism, you know? Maybe you'd find it that you didn't really, it wasn't something that you needed anymore. Uh, let, me answer, uh, 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 let me answer that, let me answer that, I because... I don't understand. Right, Tom is actually, <laughs> you don't understand, Louis, it's, it's like, uh, go through the next, you know, get, go up the hill, go up the hill. Here's what we're going to say. He doesn't because, because the Mexican guys... Yeah, let that, Tom answer, John. No, I don't want him to answer right now because it's been a long day and my client is tired. Yeah. He's tired. He's, he's, he's relaxing now, please, you know. Mary? Excuse me. Hi, oh, dear. I a We've got one rather drunken gentleman with us. It was all a far cry from the statesman's visit that John had advertised. I had to keep reminding myself that Tom was supposed to be one of the most dangerous racists in America. It was my last day with Tom. For some time, I'd been badgering him for a chance to see him at his day job. Stay here. Stay. Good morning. Good morning. Hello there. Friend or foe? Well, we haven't worked that out yet, have oh, we? Okay. Stay here, boy. That's a work in progress. I gotta keep my bandit dog back in there. He's so used to running in the car, but, uh, sometimes I have to leave him here. Tom's a TV repairman, and today he was picking up a TV from one of his most faithful clients. 
Okay, do you want a hand with that, Tom? Oh, uh, sure. Well, yeah. wait, wait, I gotta open up the back door. How are you do? Is it your TV? Yes. And what's the problem? Uh, well, it doesn't work too good. Yeah. So anyway, I have known Tommy for many years. Have you? Oh yes, and uh, I have not found in the Fallbrook or in LA where I live many years. Yeah. Uh, uh, men that honest. Yeah, you like him? Oh, I like him very much, and I can. If I'm not in here, I leave my key. So, I that much I trust him. What about? Do you know about his politics? Yes. Uh, well, we don't argue about politics. Uh, I know him as a man. He's got his ideas, and I have mine. Yeah. He does not interfere with it. Oh, it's a friend of mine for a long time. How about that? And what's your? You sound like you've got a slight accent. Where are you from originally? From Peru. From Peru? Yes. Peruvian. Yeah. I never asked you that myself. <laughs> oh, that's true, <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> and your name is? Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. Now his, uh, and, and of course, when his wife was alive, I, we used we to enjoy it. That's right. The they used to live in a house over here on the other Stage side. Coach, of yeah. Oscar was just saying that as far as politics, you kind of agree not to talk about it. Right. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Own, exactly. That's absolutely right. I respect right. Uh, all the people's ideas. Yeah. Yep. Let me, are you all right with that, Tom? Let me, you, you get one side, I'll get the other no. side. No. Come on. Oscar believes in free speech. <laughs> Do you know how much he's going to charge yet? No, I don't care about that. He don't worry about it. He knows I'll never cheat him. He is the honest <laughs> and the best technician. Would you consider Tom a friend? Yes, absolutely. No hesitation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd consider Oscar a friend? I believe so, yes. Yeah, <laughs> sure. It's been a long, we've had a long association. That's yeah. Longer than my girlfriend. <laughs> I've only known her 10 years. Oh, don't tell Mary that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're one of the most famous racists in America. Yeah. Uh, maybe the most famous. And and uh, and there you were saying that you were friends with this guy who looked to me non-white and uh, at least or at least mixed race. And uh, it just seemed inconsistent. I just thought that was kind of weird. Well, maybe you need to be educated in the ways of the world. How do you mean? I mean. Don't you see that as inconsistent? Uh, that, that you would call, well, you would say you have a friend and this, this guy who looks, who looks like he was Louis, uh, mixed race? Louis is hanging on that. Louis is hanging on this friend thing, a very abstract word. I would not debate the term friend on the man's doorstep. Yeah. Now, you and I can debate it and like that. I don't want to hurt the man's feeling. No, but there was more to it than that, Tom. I, I felt warmth between you. That's just an association you, that you know these people and and common courtesy and politeness don't you see, do you really you not, treat them respectfully. do you really not see what i'm trying to say i see what you're trying to say but your brain is twisted i think your brain is twisted well then we agree we both agree that we believe each other's brain is twisted yeah but the facts are on my side and your brain is going to stay twisted and you have friends who are non-white and you you i don't and have you pal around with people who are non-white you're I, living I have a happy life i have people in a gorgeous, i have people multicultural whoa, community whoa, whoa, I have and people, then you keep pretending whoa, whoa, that you're a revolutionary whoa, whoa. but the facts of your existence oh, completely undermine doesn't us. that totally fit your package it's the truth though <laughs> It this, is the truth. This is really funny. Your day-to-day -day life uh, is a standing refutation of everything you profess no, to it's believe. No, it's not either. It is. Well, follow me to a hostile meeting and I'll show you. They'll be trying to kill me and I may have to try and kill them. I think you're a hypocrite. Oh, okay. All right. So what? I know what I am. I don't need Louis Thoreau to quantify what I am. As abhorrent as his views were, I found it hard to take Tom totally seriously. He seemed to like being seen as a dangerous figure, but was all the while enjoying the fruits of a multiracial democracy. I felt there was a touch of karaoke about this supposed international politician. I was still puzzled by John, though, and thought I'd pay him one last visit to see if I could pin him down. Well, look at the uh, cartoons. Okay. 
How far will niggers go to compound the misery of an unfortunate situation? How about looting during a major hurricane? Do you find, how do you react to that? I don't have any reaction at all. I just smoked a cigarette. Can I, I got, I got, my mouth is a little dry. Can I go over to the hose and, you know, get yeah. a little water? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to, do you want to stop doing this, John? No, 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 no. I, I, I want to answer your questions because it, it's, it's. I mean, this is the message that you're. This is, well, this is what a manager does. This yeah, is this what is... an agent or a manager does. Oh, cigarettes, yuck. Because this is the message that you're promoting. <laughs> so how is this gonna come out? Are you gonna say that, you know, I'm an asshole because of this magazine? I, I'd say that this to is your my face. Clients, this is my client's magazine. I, I, I'm a not manager, trying to make you- A manager about that is, that is that is working for their client is working for their client. A lawyer that is I think representing you know, somebody. I'm, I mean, I think you know that this stuff is obscene, and that's it's why not obscene. Um, I can see the way you talk about it. You have a kind of sense of, of guilt about it. <laughs> I honestly can. I think that's why, you're, I think that's why you're, your mouth went. Gosh, down. I love you so much, Louis. I know you kind of have a sense of, of guilt about it. I can tell. I seriously can. <laughs> You know I have a sense of guilt? Well, Louis, let me tell you something. There is no sense of guilt. There is a representative's duty. And I think you're only doing it because you had a, you had a few bad breaks. You had your problem with drugs, getting no, arrested, no, 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 doing no, no, time. No, 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 And so you can't get no, other clients. No, no. So that's why no, you're no, representing let's, 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 let's deal with this like it's, this. Because you've, no, you no, 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 other no. options. Let me answer your question. A few bad breaks. When I went to prison, it was the best thing that ever happened to me in the world. You know why? It taught me what's really going on. Do you think this is the truth, what's in this paper? He's appealing as any political figure to a broad base of many dimensions of people. And he's, he's got skinheads, he's got uh, this and that, oh, he's I got democratic no, honestly, populists. Every time I ask a question, you kind of go on to a... No, I'm, t I'm telling you what the truth is. No, but I, I asked a simple question, you won't answer it. So I'm answering think, it. Do you think what's in this paper is the truth? What this paper is, You're not, just, just please what this me. paper is, is... Just say no. Some very hardcore opinions. Why don't you just say no? Because that would not be the truth. Is it wrong or right? Is this, the, is, does this paper tell the truth or is it is it a pack of racist lies the paper tells the truth and it tells the truth in a way that appeals to a certain dimension of his readership you think this tells the truth you really think this tells the truth oh tom metzger always tells the truth So? I was heading back to Central California to see April and the Twins. I'd heard that April had booked a studio for Lamb and Lynx to record the first few tracks of their debut album to be titled Fragment of the Future. This would be my last day among the Nazis and a final chance to challenge April on her indoctrination of her two daughters. My stickers keep on sliding. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to be skinheads when you grow up? No. Why not? Because with That's a skinhead you have to shave head. your head a real weird way. I'm keeping my it's head not a skinhead, it's skin bird. That's a female skinhead. Would you like to go out with skinheads if you, and when you're older and you're ready to start seeing boys? Yeah, sure. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because. Why? I want. It's cool. 
What did Link? What did you say, Lynx? They're very special people. They're important yeah, people. Use, uh, violin. Why are they important? Because they're very dedicated to what they believe in. Well, would you so mind that, April? Would you be cool with that? What, with him dating a skinhead? Yeah, and, and maybe getting married. <laughs> yeah, if he was if he was a good hard worker and he wasn't spending his time boozing it up and, and like, causing trouble. I don't know many mic. very well, but they seem kind of antisocial, of some of them. Well, see, to me, they're not. To me and the girls, they're always just so protective and, and polite, and ultra, ultra polite to us everywhere we go. You know, whenever we go to concerts or meetings or anything, they're always just bend over backwards to To me, they to seem kind of, of um, to me, they seem kind of angry and, and sociopathic. <laughs> I, they just they just don't seem that way to me. I mean, when you see them, maybe maybe it's because you're just so freaked out when you see people salute. Maybe that's why. Maybe I'm just not meeting any of the really good ones. Maybe. The marriage material. <laughs> hate for hate, and root for root, eye for eye, and tooth for tooth. Scorn for scorn, and smile for smile. Love for love, and guile for guile. War for war, and woe for woe. Blood for blood, and blow for blow. Well, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you think you'll go to school one day? Maybe next year, when we're ready. But right Mom now. says in a year or two. Maybe. Would, Is there something Would you like to? Yeah. It'd, it'd be, be okay. okay. And do you know why she doesn't want you to go to school now? Um, yeah. One of the things is because we're having a little bit of mo money problems, and we need new clothes, like school clothes. You, I didn't realize you have to wear special clothes. For school. I thought your mum didn't want you going to school at the moment because she disagreed with what they were teaching in school. Also that. But she wants us to go to high school. But we may not go. <sighs> why are you why would you like to go to school? What is it about school that you would like? Because we get, you know, a lot of friends and it's kind of boring just sitting home all day and not and your, all your friends are at school. And you, you have, have to, to wait, wait for them. Until, wait until they get home. It's new, dudes. Hi. Shit, this is not the way you treat a book. Especially when it's nice as this. No. It's new, sis. Back at the house, and Lamb and Lynx were due to go to a school carnival with some friends. April had told me that Lamb and Lynx's friends don't know that they're being raised as racists, and I wondered how leading this double life would affect them in the long term. I knew it was hopeless, but I thought I'd try and talk to April. No. Oh, okay, you guys are going now? Are you going? It's been a pleasure working with you. Yeah. Don't film it. Have don't a nice time at the carnival. Thank you. You should give Louie a hug. Thanks, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye, Shaggy. Bye. <laughs> bye, Shaggy. <laughs> okay, bye. Have a nice time at the carnival. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't like the milk in it. Had, have you thought about the implications of, of indoctrinating lynx and lamb in this way? Of course I have. And have you had, have you had second thoughts or misgivings of any kind? I don't want to teach them to be politically correct just because that's the easy way out. I don't want to tell them... I understand them that. But because I don't it's think not that the means easy way. It's, it's not a choice not between. It's not a choice between. The choice you face is really is is to bring them up, judging people fairly or not. 
That, that's kind of, I think, what you want to think about. I don't understand how I'm not doing that. You're, I think you're that, making I think a person, I mean, far be it for me person, to, I don't have kids, so I don't know. A person who, who tells their children that all people are created equal and that the men and women are equal, in my mind, they're lying to their children. They're just, they're blatantly lying to their child. Do you, do you realize what a handicap that will be for them in life? No, it won't be. That they, they, they're going through, they'll be going through life as, with this, um, this dual mindset, which is, you know, what their, their mum has told them. They and, shouldn't and how, have to go through, they shouldn't have to go through, uh, well, see, but I believe that we're normal and that we're correct and that other people are distorted. So, yes, I'm, I'm, I understand that I'm raising my children in a perverted world, in a perverted multiculturalist world. I'm teaching, I have to teach my children the truth, despite the fact that that's a dangerous thing to be teaching them. I'm, t I'm doing something that is very dangerous, but I can't, could not live with myself if I were to tell them anything different, because it would be a lie. It's, I think what it's about you know, really is, is, is judging people based on, on who they are, not, not your, your prejudice about who they are. Kind of giving people a chance. I find other races annoying. They bother me. I find them annoying. I don't like, I don't like their chattering in other languages. I don't like to look the way they, they look. You know, I mean, 99% of them, I just find the way that they look just really, they're just not pretty they're not they're not attractive to me I don't want to be around them I don't like the way that they act I don't like the way they allow their children to behave I don't like the way they they deal with situations I, I don't like the fact that they seem to just make everything messy and dirty wherever they are I, do, I don't like that I don't like to be around them I want to be around all white people but it's like I feel I mean, I'm like not being I can't facetious, do that. but like um, I'm not being facetious but have you ever thought about getting some kind of therapy or something like that because what you have is like almost like a, a pathological... Uh, have you ever thought about getting therapy and maybe realizing how brainwashed you are by multiculturalism? I feel like I'm pretty well connected to, uh, to reality. Well, see, I feel that I am too. I, you just, but, 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 um, you know, but you're outvoted. Huh? But basically, you're outvoted. What, here? In civilized thought, yeah, basically. My journey through the world of Nazis had reached a frustrating conclusion with an argument in a kitchen with a mother of two. I seem to have made no impact on April during my time with her, and I had to keep reminding myself just how anomalous her beliefs actually are. Somehow it wasn't much consolation when the ones who would pay the consequences were her children, Lamb and Lynx. See you later. Bye. Did I ever tell you the thing about, um, about Denzel Washington? What about? That Tom said. What did he say about him? He said that um, he thinks he's better looking than Denzel Washington. I think Tom is too. As a matter of fact, we're going to make a mug out of Tom's head. I want to trademark his head, that, you know, the beautiful head. Like what you would drink out of here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you would enjoy a drink out of that. <laughs> I sure would. Oh, yeah, man. People like mugs. Oh, yeah, they love mugs. would make a good mug. Oh, yeah. Oh, Louie.